welcome to another edition of Building the EOR and in today's edition we're going to be unboxing our 68 TPE livery. Ooh. Yeah, epic. And today we have another person with us. This is Lizzie. Hi. She is going to be helping me unbox that absolute beast. And I can't wait. This is my favourite smoke hole ever. Okay, let's get to it. Right, let's crack on. This uh, DAPO Class 68 diesel electric locomotive, double O gauge, nice shiny box. And it is a pretty good box, actually. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, out of all the manufacturers, I would say that's quite a sturdy box, one of the better ones. Anyone who's got a DAPO locomotive, you know. Right, on the side, we have a label. On the bottom, we have nothing. And on the sides, and on the top, we have this CAD design of the locomotive with this inside. Standard box for a DAPO. And I don't really care about the box. I want to know what's inside it. Do you want to know what's inside it? No. Oh dear. <laughs> good start! <laughs> Bloody good start! Right. <laughs> We have, yeah, papers, instructions, guarantees, other thing. Always for the paperwork. <laughs> anyway, before we get into that. Well, you've got a repair warranty. I've got a repair warranty, that's brilliant. You've got a guide, DCC guide. Yes. And owner's guide. Yes. There we go, that's what we've got inside. Brilliant. She is so good. Right. Let's get to the nitty gritty. What's <laughs> underneath this piece of lovely oh. foam? Dun, dun, dun. Oh my God. Yes, this beautiful piece of equipment in here. Little blister pack. Thank you. And just pull out and remove the box. And then, and then we have polystyrene, plastic, and it's a Sleeve inside a blister, blister inside a sleeve thing. Slide that out. And we have a little bag that has some bits, some pipes, and what look like balances for the front. And then open the blister pack, and there she is. Absolutely amazing piece of kit. Right, the throat. Now we've got two little plastic things that go underneath the bogies. I'm assuming that's to help it sit properly in the blister pack and definitely not needed whilst running. Now, what do you think of that? That is an absolutely amazingly beautiful model. So now it's out of its box, let's have a, a, a nice look at this livery. I mean, look at that. It is absolutely stunning. I have got to say, this this Class 68, in, in DRS livery, it just doesn't do anything for me. It just it just looks like another law court, but in TPE livery, it, I don't know, it just pops out at me. And I, I, I just think this is absolutely stunning. And that's just the livery. The local itself is absolutely phenomenal. The detail that they've gone to to actually make this local look realistic is is just something else. Even down to the disc brakes, and then all the all the stickers that are literally everywhere. So many of them. The only thing I can say that's not great about this is the sticker. 
Nice. With the Transpennine Express on one side, it's actually pretty well done. Yeah. But on the other side, you've got a bit missing where it's not transpired properly, transferred properly even. Um, so you've got a bit of spelling missing. Um, there's a couple of vents where yeah, it's I noticed not... Yeah, I that. The very corners of the vents yeah. are dented. Yeah, exactly. But to be fair, though, you wouldn't see the vents if you were... Unless you were, like, literally an inch away from the from the vehicle looking extremely carefully at it. But the Trans Pennine Express logo being missing there, that, that's something I'm going to have to take up with the, the company I bought it from. Yeah. Um, I am absolutely petrified that they're out of stock of these and I'm not going to be able to get another one. And that is my biggest worry, to yeah, be fair. Yeah, that would be a downfall at the end of the day. Yeah, because at the end of the day, if they've not got one in, then, then what are they going to do? That worries me. So um, now it's like we send it back and then get a new one. It's, poss it. it's possible Dapol have spare sh shells and would replace the shell. Um, I don't know. That but it is, it is such a shame that it's happened because it is yeah. such a nice livery and I've seen loads of these all over the Facebook groups and nobody's had a problem that I've seen with one of these yet and it's just my luck in it. Yep. Right, yeah. Anyway, on, on to some of the detail. Let's have a look at some of the detail. Right, we have sprung buffers. Mm. Yeah, I got that out, didn't I? Sprung buffers. And I didn't <laughs> screw it up. Um, we have sprung buffers. A lot of people like sprung buffers, some people don't care. I actually really like them. I think it's a detail that, you know, when you're coupling up and you're doing some close up shots of it, it looks good. And they've provided you with all the piping on one end. And on the other end, you're going to put that in itself on the other end of the vehicle you have some of the piping but you've also got um one of the small decouplers um these can be problematic but we'll see how it rolls with them anyway we'll get to that in a bit but again spun buffers on this end we have some fans on the roof uh i don't think they move they don't look like they move anyway no, they're stuck. They look pretty stuck down, don't they? Yeah. We'll find out in part two when we run it, but yeah. Um, going to the sides of the vehicle, on the detail side of things, we have the two big vents, two small vents, and then something inside that one, which I think is really, because it's quite a far way in, inside as well, whatever it is. Looks like a handle of some kind or something. I don't know, but it looks epic. Um... The door detail, the stickers are all in the right place, everything looks straight. The crispness of the livery transfer is really, really, really good on this. There's no overspray anywhere. Every line is bloody perfect and perfectly painted as well. Yeah. They haven't it, the ones screwed up. Top, yeah. yeah. These fine lines here, the bang on. You, you you can't the detail work in that yeah. is phenomenal. You know what I mean? That's that's really good painting that. Yeah. Really good. What else do you say about it? such an absolutely stunningly beautiful logo? What else can you say about it? I mean, it is... I mean, like... Take, it's even got wind... Go I know, I noticed that. that. is so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. I mean, the railings on here, are like proper fine precision. I mean, all right, probably plastic, but either way... And they then, stand out. They're yeah, not the windscreen wipers, like... Yeah. The glass is nice. I like all the glazing on it. The glazing looks good. It's quite a weighty model as well, isn't it? That's the sub yeah. Oh, in fact, I don't feel like that. There's so weight in that. I think you're about to pick up a um, dumbbell. I know. <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be capable of pulling some weight. Because yeah. it's so heavy. It'll give it so much track adherence that it can pull anything. I mean, yeah. we're not running traction tyres on this. There's no way. No, steel wheels all yeah. the way. So yeah, that you know, that's going to be. It's going to be with um, great discs on there. Oh, yeah, look at them! They're stunning, them aren't they? It's the little details like that that just make it. That's what makes. Yeah, this. you've all, you've. It's always the little details that make a tree. Definitely. Right, the reason I want to talk about this coupler, and the fact that it's a small, sprung decoupler. This loco in this livery 
only ever pulls a Raker Mark 5s with a dummy trailer. And Dapo aren't making them, but a Cura scale are. So the other half of this set, which is a handful of Mark 5 coaches and the other end of this train that looks pretty damn similar to that trailer car, whatever you want to call it. I, I, a Cura scale are making it. And I'm like, I really hope that the, because this is now released and Acura scale have only just got the uh, first replica copies back, they're, they're not painted yet. I really hope that they send one of these to the paint suppliers of the company that are going to be providing the paint for Acura scales models and that it's matched properly. I'm aware that Dean Park Station, um, I watched one of his videos a, a lot, it wasn't a long time ago, but a while back, and he was discussing how manufacturers don't match the paints within the liveries, so when you try and put a, a, a rake of, say, Hornby with a rake of, say, Batman, there's differences in the colour, and it doesn't look right. I really hope they don't make that mistake because I'm really looking forward to getting the, the Acura scale uh, coaches that come for this. And it is going to look something else. This, a Raycom R5s, and then the other end. The other end is as good a standard as this. Oh, we are done. It is going to be something else. Just hoping it's the same colours. Yep. No, I, I'm... I mean, they're the same colours, but there's a difference to them. Like with the greys, it could be a little lighter or it could be a That's little darker. That's always the problem. And I, know, I remember watching, like I said, the, the Dean Park thing, and I'm sure it was on there I was watching, and they said that if you were to put one of these locals next to one of these locals mm. and look at the paint colours, they'd be completely different. But yet when you hold this at a distance and, and that, look at it, yeah. they, they match. look the same. Yeah, yeah. because your eye perceives colour in on mass differently than it does, it does in a very small yeah. amount so if you see a tiny spot of one color and then a big spot of it the colors won't match even yeah. though they are the same paint they wouldn't look yeah. the same it's just the way your eye works so it's extremely difficult for the manufacturers to get the colors right it, you, you need to know what you're doing in this particular case and I really hope that this matches the Acura scale <laughs> and that they don't make the mistake of trying to copy the colour and blah, blah, blah. I'm sure they must work together and I'm sure between the pair of them they'll do an absolutely belting job and I'm so looking forward to these models coming out. As far as building the ELR is concerned, this set will have run through Castleton Station, the mainline station. It will have gone through there because they would have done route training at some point because... Manchester to Leeds, it can be ascertained through that particular section of line. They don't use that line, they go up a different one. But if there's ever a problem with that line, then they would use the other one and come up through Castleton. So I'm pretty certain at some point these sets have been through on driver training, definitely. So it's not as if you would never see them. So yeah, it gives me the perfect excuse to get a full rake of these. With, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's all I've got to say on the map. Just having a nosy underneath, it looks like the underneath of a loco. You can see the details with the side bits, some, you, know, you can see them, they're painted on the underside, not quite sure why because you wouldn't see them. The only thing that really stands out on this is this section here, just here, you can see the holes in the bottom, now I'm going to assume that's for a speaker that you could point down so it would give it some way of getting out from inside. I'm going to guess that's the speaker. We'll find out in part two. Um, other than that, it's just your standard underneath the logo. With the logo, C, kite mark, blah, blah, blah. The roof. The roof detail on this. I mean, the 68s as a rule have quite complicated roofs. You've got a couple of fans, air conditioning unit, whatever that is, blah, blah, blah. All the bits. It's all raised and it's properly profiled. And these extra silver bits painted on, you've even got a couple of stickers, uh, mm -hmm. transfers, even one there and there. Or in this case, it'll be painted on. But yeah. This is what a little warning stickers there and there. So it's, it is quite a detailed roof. Mm -hmm. Rivet counters out there. It's got the edging on there. I don't know if you can pick, if the camera will pick that up. Just there, it's got the edging. 
anything good. Now, this is, I wouldn't say it's a Rare Loco, they've made a few. It was a limited run, I, I think. I'm assuming they might go with the second run, given the popularity of them, but whether they do or not, I don't know. I don't know the details of it, but what I do know is, I pre-ordered this, and then it just popped up randomly. Oh, they're here. Can you pay for it, please? I was like, what, what, what? Excellent. So I paid for it. It's come. I paid 140 quid for it including delivery and i've had it three days i went on ebay tonight and i saw one sell what was it 180 quid yeah 180 quid and then five minutes later i was on facebook and i saw an advert for 225 yeah. for one of these now a lot of people would think that's actually really bad but frankly from a modeler's point of view and a collector's point of view, I actually class that as being really good. If a, if a train, if a loco, sorry, can uh, jump in value that much once you've purchased it, that's a good sign for it being an investment and not just a hobby. Yeah. These things, I mean, I could have bought three of these, sold two of them, and then got this one free. Yeah. Literally. Now, this isn't the first time this has happened as well. I've ordered other locos that are, uh, you know, limited runs small runs whatever and literally as i bought the thing the following day i could have sold it for another yeah another 30 40 quid extra 50 quid extra because they're sought after it's, it's just the way it rolls i mean i said it last time as well i was gonna next time i order something i'm gonna order three or four and sell them off and i forgot <laughs> and then when this you know came through i just bought one and that was it um I will probably in the future start buying multiples of these locos now because I'm starting to see the collector's side of things. They like precious items that people buy and put to one side, knowing that they're only getting in value, yeah. which is literally what is happening. I mean, I don't know. I reckon the price of Lima now are pretty much equal with what they would have cost brand new, if not more, yeah. when you look at the second-hand price of Lima, isn't it? So, yeah, definitely an investment. So anyway, we've got this TP local. Uh, I cannot, I've got to say, this has got to have been the most detailed, exquisite piece of modelling I've seen yet when it comes to modern era locals. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a fan of the, the, the local itself, I have to admit, and I'm also a fan of the livery. However, from a technical perspective, the detail work that's gone into this, the way that this, is, this model has been produced, and I'm so I, I, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt with the with the mistake on the Trans Pennine look, um, logo. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt on that one. And the livery is excellent. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> the livery is is oh it's brilliant. And I and I, I really wish every single one of your modern era like modelers out there had had one of these. I really do because they are a superb looking logo. But, does it run as good as it looks? And for that, we'll find out in part two. Right, so you've seen the unboxing of the uh, absolutely epic Class 68 TP livery. So in, that's part one, and in part two, we're gonna be taking the cover off it, and we're gonna be fitting a sound chip, and we're gonna be giving it a run. Uh, we'll see how it goes. And hopefully, we'll have sorted the livery properly. We'll see what happens. Anyway, see you in part two. Bye, Lizzie. Bye. Take care.